fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. My first choice of baits when I'm fishing for any kind of, where I'm bass or stripers, I always put a topwater lure. You can throw a topwater lure any time of the day. If there's a ripple on the water, then I will definitely throw it in, in the afternoon more so. But I always throw it in the morning because it's always easier to trick a fish on the surface than it is under the surface. Those stripers, those big fish, are looking for an easy meal. So that lure's just sitting there going like this, and I know if I'm on a point or a grass bed or something, and I let that, the current bring that lure to them, boosh, it's gone. But you have to, that bait has to look natural. So this is the top water bait. When I throw this bait in the water, the only thing sticking out of the water is the tail. So when I reel it, the tail's on the surface and it throws a little weight. This one's a, a mega dog. These things, you can tell, this one's been chewed up a lot. This one here, probably my biggest one's probably about 38 pounds. This is a, a big, big lure. I put two heavy split rings on there. Another thing is that anytime I'm buying any of these baits, the first thing I do is change the split rings and the hooks. You're never going to see a clip used on the front of my rods. I do not use clips. This friend of mine that makes this bait, Delta Glide bait, he has this little clip on the front. He told me to try it. It looks bulletproof. You know, it almost looks like a split ring. One of the things on these, these glide baits, what we call glide baits, which are usually a two-piece bait, one of the things I'll tell you is that you're going to see some of my baits with a split ring on the end and some of them with no split ring. So if I run one with a split ring, this bait's going to go like this. It'll probably have about a two to three feet. The further you cast, the wider the glide's gonna be. Now, when I tie it directly to the eye, it's like this, tight. And I'd say 90% of the time, I want it tight. Because when I rip it, throw the rod back at it, the bait will go like this and dart off and dart back. Sometimes they like it wide. Sometimes they only want it to go like this. You have to change up. And once you get blowed up, but when you only get three bites a day, it's tough unless you're on 10 pounders. A five pound striper will eat this bait in a heartbeat. You could sometimes, how many times have you thrown a topwater lure, whether you're bass fishing or anything else, and the fish is smaller than your lure? A lot, right? Why? Because when you're looking up like this and you're moving it, they can't see it. So your chances, that's why when I first go out, the first thing I'm gonna throw when I'm targeting the big ones is a topwater lure because I know my chances are best because they can't see it. And it's proven over and over that I've caught, we think it's funny, you know, when I first started fishing with Denise throwing top water and I get a bass that's smaller than my lure, she'd laugh like hell and she goes, what's that fish thinking? And I go, well, you need to think because that fish can't see that. It might only saw this much of that bait because it's looking up, it can't see it. So they're more easily tricked when you're throwing top water. This one sinks a little faster. This is the S waiver. These baits here are they usually run around twenty to thirty nine dollars. It's probably one of the more affordable ones. They they also work really good. This one's a slow sink, so that's about the sink rate that it has. It won't stay up on the surface like I'm doing it. I would fish this one in three feet or more. Those bigger baits I would use in shallower water. If a guy was to ask me, hey, Alan, I want to buy a swim bait, but I don't want to spend too much because my wife's going to kill you or sell it to me, I would tell you to go buy Sneaky Pete. This bait here, in a smaller version, I've caught a lot of big fish on. The guy that he bought the company from is a personal friend of mine. His name is Jason Kincannon, and he handmade all these. 
This thing here, I've caught so many bass and stripers on it, it's unbelievable. And the, and the action is, it, when you put it in the water, it just stays there, it doesn't move. It looks just like those fish in the tank. And that's what um, Garrett did with these. He made them actually stand still. Um, I don't know if he, I think, I don't think he's made a floater, but I think all his are more of your slow sink type baits. You have to have the right kind of rods, right kind of reels. Um, as far as uh, line capacity, I only need as much as I cast because most of the time when these big fish hit, they're in such shallow water, they'll run out about maybe 20 to 30 yards and stop, and then it's just a tug of war. You know, you're just beating them up. I use 30 pound test monofilament. I, don't, I do not use braid when I'm throwing any of them big lures. I use 30 pound test big game. Or Yozuri. Um, I've been trying Sunline too, which is also a decent line. But you, wanna, you don't want to use braid. It's a nightmare using that braid with that stuff. You would think that you, know, that you would need that braid for a hook set. I'm telling you, when those fish eat those lures, like you're going to see, I don't know if it came up, but they choke them. You know, those lures are down in their throat. A lot of time it's hard to get those. Make sure you got a long pair of pliers so you can get them out, you know, and get those fish safely released. I want to use a rod that's more parabolical bent, meaning that it bends through the whole rod. You don't want to use a fast taper rod. I used to do a, some designing with Loomis, and when they first came out their swim bait rods, you know, they went to San Diego first, and all the rods that they brought back for us to look here, we were looking and we go, man, what are these guys fishing for? You know, they were just outright stiff. And I've used them and I have kept losing a lot of fish. And I said, you know what, I just got to try something. I'm going to go to a lighter one. So I actually worked with them and designed a lighter rod. So it has more bend to it, a little bit more give. But you want to make sure you have a rod with a handle that's long, not a short one like for bass. Because when they hit it, you got to have it tucked under your arm. So I basically hold this like this, hold the reel here, hold the rod here, so I have, when they hit, it doesn't swing the back end of the rod out. I use all slow gear racial reels, um, and no matter what kind of fishing I'm doing, I use, I like to use the slower racials. I don't care to use fast gear, gear racial reels. The only reason you would need a fast racial reel is like if you set the hook and you can't keep up with the fish, then I would go faster. But it's always easier to turn the handle faster than to turn one slow. It's very hard. I throw it out like that and I hold it and I turn the reel like this and stop. This is how fast I reel. Just like that. I hardly move it. Now if I'm going after, if I'm in a bunch of schoolie fish from that 8 to 15 pounds, then yes, I'll reel a little bit faster because I know there's a lot more out there, more competition for food. Those guys are scrambling, chasing, trying to catch all this, all their food, right? But when you're only one, you want to trick that guy. You want to reel real slow. So I just hold it real slow, and I turn slow. And when they hit, you're going to know it. This rod will just fuck like someone's trying to yank it right out of your hand. And, I, and most of the time, I don't even set it. I'll just sweep it, and then just hold them and let them. And one of the things that I found is that when you're in shallow water and you hook one of these stripers, they roll like a sturgeon. And their gill plate right here is sharp. And they'll cut your line. They'll cut 30 pound test like it was strained. So a lot of times when I hook one and I see him roll, I free spool it. I don't want to lose my lure, so I free spool it and then wait till he's done and then click it and hope he's still on there when I catch up to him. Because if you put pressure on him and he's rolling, bye bye, your lure's gone. So if you're using a $200 bait, bye, gone. My rods are all like seven and a half up. I prefer using eight footers. Eight footers, you can lob this a lot further than you can a short rod. And plus when you swing, you have so much more. Did you catch most of your big strikers on the Sacramento or the San Joaquin? Um, a long time ago, I caught them all on the sack, but now I'm more on the 
I do both. When I I could probably tell you I probably caught most of them in uh, Liberty Island, which is on the Sacramento side. But I've caught a lot in Frank's track in Mildred in the old days. But I'm going to be there this year because of the way our water situation is. Okay. How do you pick the colors? Uh, lures are really easy. So usually, like the dirtier the water, the darker the color. So when you're in real clear water, I use translucent colors. What knot are you using to tie those? Um, I only use one knot for everything, but I use a lot of uh, leaders when I use braid, and I use an Alberto knot. But when I tie a knot, I go through twice, three times, back through, and through again. Like the old trilane knot. <laughs>